Hi everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make not a dorset button but a shirt lace button. A ring button that is often confused as a dorset button. And if you stick around to the end I'll also show you how to make a slight variation to come up with a different design. So let's get started. A shirtlace button is a common name for a type of Zwirnopf, which is thread button, common in Austria, Czechoslovakia, um, Germany. And it's made slightly different to a dorset button. So the first thing you'll need is a ring. And if your ring has a flat face, that's all the better for this particular technique. For this particular pattern, I'm going to use the pattern that is included in our Zwirnop Little Button Journal Kit. So the written instructions are all there and the size of ring that's included. You can use any size of ring and you can adapt this pattern. There's a lot of different types. I'm going to mark out on the ring using one of our circle gauges the divisions for 10 spaces. Now you actually need 20 for this particular design. So you can just about see them. So we'll also need a mark um, to wrap at the center as well. I'm using the thread. Um, I'm using a number eight pearl cotton and it's still on the spool. So let's just move these out of the way. And I'm going to use two colors so that you can see what I'm doing. So we'll just put those to the side. Hold your thread to the back of the button, uh, the button ring. And then what you need to do is to lay a wrap from bottom to top where you've made your marks. I know that you won't be able to see them very well, but don't worry. And then we're going to lay a second. So one length of thread is an end. So that's two ends laid from bottom to top. That is a wrap. We're going to rotate slightly anti-clockwise and we're going to lay another two. And that one is going to be in between the spaces of the marks that I've made. Okay. And then we're going to repeat until we have got 10 wraps for 20 spokes. Now a wrap goes across the face of the button, a spoke from the center out. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So there's my 10 wraps for 20 spokes. And you can see I've got a few gaps um, that are slightly uneven, but that's okay, nothing to worry about. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut the thread from the bore and thread onto a tapestry needle. I'm going to turn the button mold over and I'm just going to catch some of those threads at the back of the button in order to fasten these wraps. You can, the initial um, thread where you started, you can tie that into a knot you don't always need to, it often holds all by itself, um, but I know a lot of people like to do that, so we'll, we'll include that step here. And then trim close. Now as you can see, I can now tweak this so that my spokes are more evenly spaced, which is why using the marks that we wrote that we put onto the um, ring is just as a guide. Now we're going to go to color number two. This is also still on the spool, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the end, thread it onto the needle, put it through a few of the threads at the back of the button, come around a second time, 
and then I'm going to take the needle away. If that, when I pull it, hasn't held, you can always put a knot at this end of the fabric and pull it through, uh, fabric, thread, and pull it through and then trim close. So that just secures your second thread. So now we're going to turn over and we're going to lay some more wraps over the top of these. Now these wraps are going to be placed from bottom to top, skipping seven spokes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how many that we need to skip. And then we're going to rotate slightly and we're going to wrap on the next set of spokes. And the next and carry on all of the way around. And you can tweak your spokes a little bit if you need to. Okay, so I finished wrapping the over wraps and you can see that each of the darker color uh, spokes have two over wraps, one going in each direction. That's when, when each of them has that, you know that you've completed your full circle. So again, cut from the ball of thread, thread your needle, and we'll secure this at the back as well. And we're just securing through the back wraps. So do a little knot and sink that through. So now we need to cover the ring. For this you will need to cut your thread. You're going to need at the very least an arm's length. Um, you can add more thread so it's not the end of the world if you have taken too short um, a length. I'm just going to thread the needle and I'm going to put a little knot at the other end and I'm th I've threaded singly. So attach the thread at the back of the button and it's a good idea to go through a second time just to make sure that that's secure and then you're going to come up to the edge. Now we're going to cover the ring. So the first covering stitch will go in through the gap and you need to make blanket stitches here but of course the first one won't be a proper blanket stitch yet. And go when you form the stitch what you need to do is make sure that your ridge from the blanket stitch actually goes down. Just line up the second one because it's always a little difficult lining them up initially to the back. So by doing a little pull there, you'll take that ridge to the back of the ring. You can't turn it afterwards um, the way that you can with a dorset button. So we'll place three stitches in between the gap. And obviously the number of stitches that you place will depend upon the size of the ring and the size of your thread. Now I've come up through the next gap, but instead of starting the next series of stitches, I'm now going to take the thread through the first gap and make a little stitch. Now that little stitch will hold those crossed threads in place. Okay, and now another three blanket stitches. And this is what makes a difference between a dorset button and a Northern European uh, ring button. And that is the very simple fact that they lay the spokes first and cover the ring afterwards. In dorset, the ring is always covered first and then the spokes are added. So I'm going to carry on placing three stitches to cover the ring all of the way around and to include one 
little back stitch over those crossed second color stitches to hold everything in place. So I've now filled the entire uh, ring with three stitches in between and that also it meant that I could tweak the spacing a little bit as I needed to and that is the um, shirt lace button as given in that particular kit but there are many variations so I'm going to show you one but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just fasten that at the back along the edge by going underneath some of the threads. Now I could knot it and just finish it off here and trim that close. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you another variation and this is something that you see on a lot of historical ones. What you need to do is bring your needle up through one of those gaps again. And this time you're going to go down around that second overlay. Okay, and that you can pull that circle just a little bit. The reason that you see this on many early examples, uh, the white on white examples, is because this helps to keep the threads in place when the buttons were laundered. So I'm going to go ahead and carry on putting these little stitches all the, the way around. And there's the alternative button complete. So now all we have to do is fasten the thread off at the back And please don't ever use the threads that you've made the button with, i.e. by leaving that long tail to sew your button on. Always sew on with a new thread. That way you can remove the button and keep it without it falling apart. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, do please subscribe and have a look at my channel. There's a lot of other button making tutorials. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.